Hello and welcome to the first ever Inside F2 race preview. I'm Fraser Ford and I'm delighted to be joined today by Inside F2 writers Luke John Buckle and Jenny Craig and I'm also joined by Porsche Sports' Carla Penniston. Coming up on today's show, we look ahead to the forthcoming season. We discuss all of the new driver lineups, the new calendar, and the new race format. We also are going to dissect who's going to be challenging for the title this season. And finally, if you're new to Formula 2, fear not. We have an easy breakdown of everything you need to understand from our panel. But before we get started, how are we all? Let's start with you, Luke. It's great to have you with us. Hopefully you aren't on mute. I can't, I honestly, I can't tell you how many times I've done that uh, since we've been in lockdown. Um, but yeah, are you ready to go for the new season? Yes, I'm looking forward to it. It should be good fun. Uh, thank you for having me as well. And um, yeah, it should be a lot of fun this year. Uh, and Carla, are you looking forward to seeing the cars back on track? Very much so. It's been a long, dull winter, so definitely looking forward to seeing some F2 cars back on track. Yeah, and it certainly feels like it's been a long winter, but obviously it's been a shorter off season for the for the Formula Two guys and the Formula One guys and all of the motorsport community really, with obviously a later finish to last season. Do do, do you think that the drivers, do you think do you think they're gonna be a little bit more prepared than in previous years, Jenny? I don't think it'll make too much of a difference for them, but it's so much better for us because we've not got long to wait. Yeah, I can't wait to see the cars back on track this weekend. It's going to be brilliant. Now, last season was a pretty incredible season for Formula 2. Uh, we had 12 different winners from seven different teams. Uh, and obviously, three drivers made the step up to Formula 1 for 2021. What were the highlights for you, Luke? Yeah, there were so many highlights. But uh, I'd say Mick Schumacher winning the championship, uh, especially his championship winning driving to kids, and uh, made that bit of an error at turn for the lockup early on in the race and then getting uh, towards the end of the race and winning the championship in the end. Uh, Yuki Tsunoda, he impressed me a lot too in his one and only year in Formula 2, bouncing back from a difficult year in Formula 3. Uh, he showed maturity well beyond his years, taking some good wins. And um, also the Hungara ring, there was some pretty good racing there as always, really. Robert Schwartzman took a good victory and Luca Giotto just helmed off Callum Islet on his worn tyres right at the end of the race. So hopefully we can have more of the same this year. Yeah, I for one cannot wait to see Yuki Tsunoda in a Formula One car this season. I think it's going to be brilliant. But as you said, it certainly was an exciting season and I expect we're in for more of the same this season. Carla, we've got a number of drivers returning to the series this season. So Robert Schwartzman, Guan Yu Zhou, Christian Lungard, for example. Uh, we've also got some rookies entering the field this year, uh, including last season's FIA Formula 3 champion, Oscar Piastri, who'll be driving for Prima in 2021. Who do you think we should be looking out for this season? Um, for me, I don't think there's like just one driver that you can look out for this season. I feel like the drivers to look out for are those that are involved in the F1 driver academy. So you've got your Ferrari driver academy uh, juniors of Robert Schwartzman and Max Armstrong. And then also the Alpine drivers, Guang Yu Zhao, Christian Lungard and Oscar Piastri. Then also you've got your Williams academy drivers as well, Roy Nisani and Dan Tictum. But for me, I'd we're really looking at the Red Bull Junior battles going on, in particular the high-tech pairing of Liam Lawson and Yuri Vips. They'll be both wanting to follow in the footsteps of Yuki Tsunoda, as will Yen Daruba, actually. But I feel like Lawson and Vips will be in competition with each other at high-tech. And for Lawson as well, he's also competing in DTM. So does that give him the extra edge on the two of the uh, Red Bull Juniors? So... I feel like we'll have to see it. Like I said, I don't think there's just one driver you can look out for. And then um, the Ferrari Academy drivers are going to be in competition as well because by the end of the season, there might be a seat up for grabs at Alfa Romeo. We've got Kimi that's um, been driving for longer than most of the F2 grid have been alive. So I'm guessing that some of the Ferrari Academy might be wanting to take his seat at the end of the year. Yeah, surely Kimi Raikkonen can't do another season. Surely there's going to be a seat up for grabs Alfa Romeo for 2022. Uh, and obviously there'll be numerous drivers, as you've mentioned, that will be interested in that seat. Uh, Robert Schwartzman, of course. Uh, we can't forget Callum Eilert, uh, of course, uh, you know, not competing in Formula 2 this season, but he'll definitely be looking out for that role. Potentially Pateo Paul Chair as well, obviously, uh, part of the Sauber Academy. Uh, so maybe he'll be looking out for it. But, but Marcus Armstrong is an interesting one, isn't he? So obviously part of the Ferrari uh, Academy uh, had quite a similar season last season to what Jack Aitken had when he first came, you know, joined to Formula 2, uh, obviously alongside George Russell at ART. Um, he struggled a little bit in his first season, 
Uh, but then, you know, had really a really you know strong couple of seasons after that. Obviously, now he's he's driven in Formula Two. So, you know, do you do you, do you think Marcus Armstrong could do something similar this season, Carla? I feel like he could do if he starts strongly this season again. Yeah, let's wait and see. As we've mentioned, this season we have new driver lineups, a new calendar, and an all new race weekend format. Let's take a look at the calendar. We'll be kicking off the season in Bahrain, followed by two back-to-back street circuits at Monaco and Baku. Silverstone, Monza and Sochi follow before a first appearance at Jeddah and then finally finish off the season, as always, in Abu Dhabi. Carla, what do you make of the new calendar? Are you happy with those eight rounds? Yeah, uh, reasonably happy with them eight rounds. Um, I feel like, for me though, and I don't know about how other fans feel, I feel like it's good to have some familiarity across the eight rounds and we don't have Barcelona, Austria or Spa on the calendar. And for me, I feel though, I feel like they are fan favourites and driver favourites as well. Luke, obviously, as Carla alluded to there, no Barcelona, no Austria and no Spa this season. Are we going to miss those races? Uh, certainly, it would be very good to have those circuits, uh, especially Spa and Austria. They've created some good racing over the years and they've got good history too. And obviously, we've had our first glimpse of the Jeddah Street Circuit. Uh, it looks like it's going to be mega fast, uh, but perhaps a few people concerned that there might not be many overtaking opportunities. Probably at turn one uh, and probably at turn 27 as well. And turn 27, how weird does it sound saying that? 27 turns uh, on the Jeddah Street Circuit. Uh, what, what are your first thoughts on the circuit, Jenny? Are, are you worried that there's going to be a lack of overtaking opportunities there? It's very fast flowing and there's a, it's really narrow, but there's three DRS zones. So if it's not natural overtaking, it can definitely be done artificially. So my hopes are quite high. Yeah, it's going to be really exciting to watch. So let's talk about the new format. Fridays will stay the same, consistent of a 45 minute free practice session, followed by a 30 minute qualifying session. There's now going to be three race, races per weekend across eight rounds. However, there's now going to be two sprint races on a Saturday, followed by the feature race on a Sunday morning before the Grand Prix. The start and order for the, for the first sprint race on a Saturday will be determined by reversing the top 10 from Friday's qualifying session, whilst the second sprint race will be determined by reversing the top 10 finishers from sprint race one. I hope you're still with me. Uh, hopefully uh, I've made that as simple as possible to understand. However, if you are still a little bit confused, you can check out the Understand F2 feature on our website, www.insideF2.com, which has an easy breakdown of the race weekend format for you to read. Luke, what do you make of the new format? It could help out the form drivers in Formula 2, guys like Robert Schwarzman, who was a bit hit and miss last year. Some races he was really on it and up there with the top guys in other races he was down in the midfield maybe marred by a poor qualifying but uh, my only concern with the new format is uh, the fact that Ray, the grid for race three will be set on Friday so that could be a bit confusing for new fans. Like Luke said it's going to be um, consistency is going to be really key so um, drivers like Robert Schwartzman who last year were quite off it if they have that again like through a whole week for a through a whole race weekend they're going to really really struggle to collect points because there's going to be so many to collect in one weekend with three races Carla I think the point that Luke made is a, is a really good point are you, are you worried that the new format could confuse new viewers it could do um but I feel like with anything that's new it takes fans a while to get used to it but as long as the new format brings action and drama with it then I feel like that is the most important thing to fans but I suppose my only concern with new format would be the fact that there is two sprint races on the Saturday so what if the one of the cars suffers a mecha mechanical failure in the sprint race one that only gives the teams a couple of hours really to get the car turned over yeah, and I, I think it's a really good point because, as you say, if there's a mechanical issue or drivers come together in sprint race one, it's going to be really difficult for the teams to, to turn around the car for sprint race two if, you know, drivers can't race in the second race, won't it? Yeah, very much so. An all new format, as we mentioned, and an all new driver lineup for this season. Let's take a look at the new driver lineups. FIA Formula 3 champion Oscar Piastri lines up alongside many people's favourite for the championship this season, Robert Schwartzman at Framer. Formula 3 runner-up Teo Pulcher lines up alongside Christian Lungard, ART, 
whilst Alpine test driver Guan Yu Zhou remains at UNI Virtuosi, where he's joined this season by Felipe Dragovic. Young Brit Dan Tixon moves to Carlin, whilst Ferrari Academy driver Marcus Armstrong moves to Dams. If you want to check out all of the driver lineups, head over to our website or check out our Instagram or Twitter pages. You can find all of the links to our social media platforms in the description below. Carla, nine rookies in the field this season. We have, of course, the Antoine Hubert Award, which honours the highest scoring rookie of the year. Who should we be looking out for this season? Uh, I would say Teo Pusher. I feel like a lot of people would, will say Oscar Piastri, and that's a fair point because he won Formula 3 last season. But Teo Pusher was only three points off Piastri in a three last season. So, And he also achieved five podiums in six races. And now he's at a team in ART alongside Christian Lungard. I feel as though that could be a strong lineup this season. So I would also be looking out for Taylor Pusher out of the nine rookies. Yeah, he, he's certainly going to be really exciting to watch this season. The youngest driver on the grid, and I think a lot of people are excited to see how he's going to get on this season. Uh, Jenny, anyone that sticks out for you? Anyone to keep your eye out on? I'm looking forward to seeing Petakoff, how he does in F2, because he hasn't done F3, and it's really rare from drive, for drivers to go straight from somewhere that's not F3. So um, I don't think he can be challenging for the championship yet, but I think he can definitely do a few surprises. Yeah, definitely one to keep an eye out on. Now, as we've already mentioned, the season open this season takes place at the place it finished last season, the Bahrain International Circuit. We obviously saw not two, but four brilliant races there last season. But before we talk about the track, let's take a lap of the Bahrain International Circuit with Luke. Hello everyone and welcome to Inside FD's Track Guide for Bahrain. Round one of the season, it's a long way down to turn one. Spot the breaking point on the left hand side. And now hit the apex, don't clatter the curb. Now turn two and three. You need the best stick possible. Open the DRS on the run down to turn four. It's a really good opportunity for overtaking. Hit the apex for turn four, ease it over to left hand side. And now into the middle sector, the turn six and seven chicane. Hit the apex on the left hand side, and now breaking downhill for the hairpin. So easy to lock a front. Now we're going uphill again towards the tricky turn nine and ten trail break on the way into the corner. And now we're on to the back straight, open the DRS. Keep the car over to the right hand side and spot the braking point for turn 11. Hit the apex, feed the car over to the right hand side and now uphill for turn 12. It's pretty quick, you've got to commit to it. Now turn 13. Use some curb on the exit of the road and now keep the car over to the left hand side. Spot the breaking point for the final corner. Drops down on the way into the apex. And now the drive to the line. Open the DRS. And that's a lap of Bahrain. So, a great circuit, Luke. What do the drivers need to watch out for? Yeah, certainly it's a very good circuit. Um, I'd say the most difficult section of the track is turn 9 and 10. It's a downhill complex of corners and it's... Very easy to lock the left front too. The front end is moving all over the place. It's a bit bumpy and uh, you've got to spot the apex too because uh, after that corner is a very long straight heading down towards turn 11, which is also a DRS zone. Uh, also, I'd say the main overtaking opportunities of the lap are turn one and turn four. Both are very long straights leading into slow corners with a bit of DRS too. And uh, it's a very good track. It creates good racing and hopefully it delivers some good action uh, this weekend too. So obviously Formula 3 didn't race here last year. The drivers who did race in Formula 2 last year had f uh, have four races worth of experience on this track uh, compared to some of the rookies who obviously some of them may never have driven here before, especially not on the the new the, or the tyres that they're going to be using this season, which will obviously be new for a lot of the guys who have just come up from Formula 3. Do, do, are we expecting the new rookies in the field this season to, to perhaps struggle a little bit more on the opening weekend than you know what we used to in the past? Uh, possibly. It's certainly an advantage for guys like Robert Schwartz and who are 
going into their second season to have that track knowledge of Bahrain and all that racing experience at the circuit. But uh, the drivers have already done uh, two or three days of testing at Bahrain this year already. And I'm sure once uh, the weekend begins and they get into the groove of practice and qualifying, the rookies will be OK and uh, we'll have some good action too. And Carla, how, how important is it for drivers to get a good start to the season and kind of generate that good momentum that they can kind of carry, you know, through to for the remainder of the season? I think it's very important for the drivers to start off strongly and get that momentum as soon as they can. Um, like we said, Max Armstrong, last he's had strong starts to his seasons, but I feel like, yes, you can start strong and you can put that benchmark and that statement out to your teammate and the rest of the drivers on the grid, but you need to carry this momentum throughout the season. So having that consistency is key, I believe. Yeah, we'll see what happens. So question time for our panel now. So as a platform, all about our fans, we wanted to give you guys the opportunity to ask any questions that you may have on the lead up to a race weekend. We're going to have this feature all season long. So if you do have any questions, please get in touch. So we have a question from our Discord community which is from at Callum Haugigo. I think that's uh, how you pronounce it. I'm sorry if that is uh, if I pronounced that wrong. But he asked, do you think it was better or worse for Formula 3 and Formula 2 to go to different venues this year? Jenny, we'll come to you for that one. I'm guessing it will be better for the teams because most of them run in both F2 and in F3, so they can focus more on one series. Um, I'm going to miss having... So like a really busy weekend, but I don't think it'll, when it starts going, I don't think it'll make too much of a difference because we've got three races in each. So I think it should make up for it. Yeah, that's it. It definitely does make up for it. But I know what you mean. We are uh, going to spend a little bit less time this season sitting on the sofa watching Formula Formula One, Formula Two, Formula Three. But it still should be good fun, shouldn't it? Um, we have a question from our Instagram. Uh, so at WRL Russell asks, with the likes of George Russell and Charles Leclerc winning Formula 3 or GP3 for the first time, the, the first time uh, of asking, do you think some of the same success will come for Oscar Piastri this season? Carla, we'll come to you for that one. Um, I can't see why it can't happen. Like you said, we've already had a, it's there already is history in um, Formula 2 for that to happen with George Russell and Charles Leclerc, but Oscar Piastri is a strong team in Prima. He has a strong teammate alongside him who's experienced in Robert Schwartzman so I can't see why Oscar Piastri can't do the same. Yeah we'll wait and see I'm really excited to see how Oscar Piastri gets on this season Uh, and finally Ash Buckman on Twitter asks if you had to pick one driver who has the greatest opportunity to get to Formula One for 2022 by having a good season who will it be and what team will they drive for? Luke we'll come to you for that one. Uh, I'll go for Robert Schwartzman. I think he's got a great chance of winning the Formula 2 Championship with Prima, his second year of Formula 2 as well. And he, um, if he, he can, should build on his success from last year. And um, I think if he were to go to Formula 1, I think he would join Alfa Romeo. I mean, surely Kimi Raikkonen can't go on forever. And uh, there's a couple of question marks over Antonio Giovinazzi too. He's a bit erratic and uh, maybe there could be an opening for Robert Schwartzman at Alfa Romeo. Yeah, I think you're right there. We will wait and see. Now, if you're new to Inside F2, we have a live blog that will help you keep up to date with all of the latest developments throughout every race. Head over to our website when the race is live and there'll be a big link uh, for our live blog. And as I said, it's a big link, so you shouldn't miss it. Okay, we're going to end today with a couple of quick fire questions for the race weekend ahead. So Luke, we'll come to you first, then we'll come to you, Carla, and we'll finish off with you, Jenny. So, Question number one, who is going to be our champion this year, Luke? Uh, I'd say Robert Schwartzman. I think if he can just uh, have a good start this year, first of all, and uh, build the consistency and the qualifying of his campaign, he could certainly be a contender for the Formula 2 Championship. Carla? Um, I'm also going Robert Schwartzman as well. He's in a strong team in Prima who seem to have that team spirit about them with the Ferrari Driver Academy. Uh, so, yeah, for me, Robert Schwartzman as well. Robert Schwartzman, a favourite for the title this season. Jenny, anyone other than Robert Schwartzman? Uh, I think Dan Tictum's in a good position with Carlin. All of the comments that came from testing were really positive and he just seems a lot happier at Carlin than he did at Dams. 
Yeah, and Carlin obviously haven't won the Drivers' Championship since they re-entered the sport, so that would be brilliant for Carlin if Dan Tickton could uh, could win that. Uh, and the, the second question, uh, one to watch for this weekend, so perhaps someone that could surprise us this weekend, Luke? Um, I'll go for Oscar Piastri. I think uh, he's got a great chance of doing well this weekend. Uh, he's done pretty well in Formula 3 and Formula 1 over the past couple of years, so... He should do well over the, this weekend and uh, in the season two. Carla? Uh, I'm going to go for Teo Pusher. He's at a strong team in ART with Christian Lungard. So I feel like both of them will want to start strongly this season. And Jenny? I'm looking forward to seeing Felipe Pedrogovic at UNI. Um, the UNI are really, really quick and he did so well in MP last year. A lot to live up to if he's going to live up to what Callum Eilat delivered last season. Um, so, so that's it for our uh, preview show today. Thank you so much for staying with us. Luke, Carla, Jenny, thank you very much for joining us. It's been great to have you with us. Um, and we'll be back, of course, for the for round one review show on Sunday evening. If you guys at home want to get involved in the conversation, you can either join our community on Discord, uh, where you can find the link for that via our website. Uh, or if you have any questions, please get in touch via our social media channels. If you enjoyed the show, uh, then please make sure you hit the subscribe button and let us know again in the comments. That's all we have time for today. But from me, Fraser Ford, and all of us here at Inside F2, we'll see you next time.